I just noticed the camera shut off and I'm glad I'm glad that I was looking at it uh, I'm running out of space I've got to move some stuff around so we'll call this part two if I'm afraid of what colleagues at work or or, or, or at school or are thinking about me then that's where my fear is but I'm supposed to be more afraid of what my father thinks he said that's what it means the fear of God that, that it, it matters to you more what I think than what they think and I was like well, that's really good see now and what I like about that is because that lines up with the heart of a loving father. Not this, be afraid of me. You know, God's not, I don't see God like that. I don't see God like this mean ogre. That, or, you know, not mean ogre, but you know what I mean? I don't see him like this harsh thing. I see him sweet and loving. Now, I know Jesus is going to come down and, and there's going to come a time he's coming as a warrior and, and you know, he's going to deal with them, but we're different. We're his bride. You know, I'm going to, I want to treat my bride right. I want her to know that I love her. I want her to know that I care so much about her that it's more important to me how she feels, how she, you know, what she thinks, what's going on in her life, and that she always knows that she can trust me. You know, more than anything else, that's what I want my bride to know. That, that I'm there for her, that I love her, that I would never, I don't want anything bad to happen to her ever, and that she can talk to me, and that, that she doesn't have to worry about me being um, uh, angry or harsh or, or, or anything, that she's always confident that I'm never going to hurt her, that I'm never going to do anything that's going to hurt her feelings or hurt her heart. I've got a phone call. Oh my gosh, I can't take this call. If I do, it's going to shut off my thing and I gotta take this call so I've got to send a message that says I'll call you back in a second I've got to send one of these there I'll call you back shortly message all right so where are we we're in this mark four and he says these are the ones sown on uh, uh, on stony ground and the stones remember are the things that you carry in your heart from things that happen to you for instance you got burned in a relationship you're gun shy, you know. You got um, you got treated wrong. You know you're you've got a little bit of bitterness or hardness of the heart, and and here's the problem with well, first of all, let's let's talk about what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to search our heart for those things and 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 ask Jesus to to just get rid of them and let them go. You know, we're not supposed to harbor resentment or bitterness or unforgiveness or things like that because those are rocks in the heart. And, and and this is the way that I know it works because I was around for a long time. <laughs> is that if you don't do that, you end up carrying those rocks into the next relationship or in other relationships with other people around you. Could be friends, could be, you know, a spouse or a future spouse or maybe, you know, you're dating to get married or something like that. Um... And you're holding on to all that stuff that all those other people did to you. And you're judging this person based upon what other people did to you. Man, that'll destroy your relationship before it ever gets started. And and that's because your soil, is, which is your heart, is not fertilized. You haven't taken care of that. You've kept all those things in because you don't want to be hurt again. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to be guarded. You know, look, I'm probably guilty of just... letting it out there because I, I'm not playing any games with anybody I don't I don't really care I'm just like hey this is how I feel <laughs> you know if you're gonna step on me you're gonna stomp on me um, because I, I'm not I'm not trying to hold anyone else accountable for for the stuff that's gone on in my past does that make sense I just you know and and it you know it, it may I don't know you know I used to be in the world and I used to play the game. I was a um, I was a bachelor for a while, and I was unsaved. And I knew how to play the game. I knew that you got you to hold your feelings back. You don't want to show any. You don't play your hand too soon. You want to show your cards. You got to be real careful. Play it cool. You know, reel them in. You know. I, but that person's dead. You know. One of the things I asked God to do when I got saved was, it's like I said, take all that worldly behavior, all those. All that worldly knowledge of how to how to how to manipulate people or deal with people, and just t 
take it from me. Just take it from me. I, I don't want to be like that anymore. I just I just want to be pure with people. I just want to be real. If, if you notice on my videos, man, I just kind of like, I just talk out of my heart. I'm just, this is who I am. This is who I am. So, um, you know, that's who I am. I'm going to pause the video for a second because I have to. Okay. I don't know how much longer I got. Again, I've got, I'm running out of space here. So, in this parable, one of the points he's making is that people fall away who are in this state because of the persecution of the word. You know, the, the tribulation is coming for the word. Satan isn't really coming for us. He's lost us. We're saved. He's coming for the word because he doesn't want the word to get out. Got a weird uh, shadow on my face. Cut my face off like a razor blade. All right, so Paul, there we go. In he's talking about love. First uh, Corinthians chapter was it twelve or thirteen? Where he's talking about lo love. He says. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of li liberty, and preserves, and pers <laughs> preserves, and perseveres, hello, I even have my glasses on, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who lives in the word, he will be blessed in what he does. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, that, that's not Paul, that's going back to James. Uh, that's, that's attached to James uh, 122. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who lives in the word, he will be blessed in what he does. You know, what is the law of liberty? Think about that for a second. I saw that and I was like, that's interesting. But he looks into the perfect law. Of... So here's what James is saying. He says, be doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone's a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. But when he goes away from there, once he forgets what he looks like. I gotta keep watching the clock to make sure I'm not gonna run out again. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer, who forgets, but a doer who lives in the word. I think that's really good. Who lives in the word. He will be blessed in what he does. What is the law of liberty? But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. I thought that was interesting when I read that. That kind of jumped out at me. I was like, hmm. What is the law of liberty? Because he says, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and perseveres, so you're not just looking at it, but you're persevering in it, he is a hearer, not a doer. He lives the word. He lives the word, he says. He lives it. He doesn't just read it. He doesn't just go to church on Sunday. He lives it. we got to live it, y'all. we got to live this thing out. This is a walk. And, and it's not always perfect, and you're not going to do always say or do the right thing. But you got to try. You know, you just got to try. So here we go. This is what I saw.